That's right everyone, I finally broke the curse. We got a new chapter of the Jojo Lands a couple of days ago and it sure was a doozy. But wait, look at that title cover. The unending pursuit begins. Is this the return of Toru? First, I would like to mention something that I found to be pretty funny. That being the first few lines of dialogue found in the chapter. Charming Man says, a totally normal, average, everyday, casual, painless tumor is forming. The kind you generally wouldn't even notice existed. And my health is deteriorating. And it's really enjoyable. It's funny to see him be calm about this, or maybe sarcastic in a way, about a tumor growing in his eye. It's funny considering how scared and crazy Usagi is turning out due to all of this. That seeing Charming Man not screaming a single time during all of this definitely boosts him as a character in my eyes. Even more so because I was already very fond of Charming Man from the start. But seeing how he bounces off the other main characters after just a few chapters is a great sign for what can happen in the future. November Rain as a stand has gotten more and more useful every time we have seen it. And this time is no different. The way Jodeo used November Rain here is giving us the idea that the stand isn't as one note as we may have thought, and could arguably be one of the most useful stands to the group. We saw Jodeo use a single droplet of rain to destroy the stand that was within Dragona. We somehow saw the stand travel inside Dragona's nose to the exact location of the stand, being trapped due to Dragona's own smooth operators. It was really fun to see the panels as well. As we get closer and closer to Dragona, Gona's nose and then the various tunnels within the human body just to find smooth operators successfully trapping the enemy stand bags grooves and destroying it instantly. It makes me wonder what other uses November Rain is going to have in the future because it's gotten crazy lately. I can see a universe where November Rain itself just turns out to be an extremely powerful stand rather than getting some super form like some other JoJo's. This chapter gave us a look at a few new characters, named characters in fact. The first of which is Bobby Jean, or Agent Bobby Jean. Since he has the title of Agent, it makes me believe that this guy is like a cop or some sort of occupation of justice. Maybe we could use this sense of justice to figure out why only 8.8% .8 percent of my audience is subscribed to my channel but who knows like we don't even know if this guy is truly a villain at the moment since it looks like bobby jean is also just someone who isn't too fond of howler judging by the dialogue with the one random character he was with it would be fun seeing this third party be used to affect someone who isn't necessarily siding with our main characters or howler we haven't really had that since la squadra and golden wind so far he looks really cool i wonder if he's a stand user or not though bobby jean definitely knows what a stand is since another newly shown character literally tells him that our Jojo Lands gang was a bunch of stand users. So they seem like a pair who know each other very well, but I'm interested to see if he has a stand ability of his own. It hasn't been revealed yet, but I could see the possibility that Bobby Jean doesn't have a stand, but rather that he just understands how stands work or that they're the name of an ability. Something like Weka Peepo back in Steel Ball Run. Speaking of which, our next character herself isn't named, but her stand is. That's right, the stand that has affected our stand users in the last two chapters is owned by this little girl. It's confirmed that Bag's Grooves is an automatic stand, but something strange is that when Jodeo destroyed the stand, we see the girl get a nosebleed. It's very rare to see an automatic stand hurt the user when destroyed, so it's interesting to see it take place here. Maybe Araki will make this a more common thing, as Dejolian was plagued with like half the cast having these automatic stands, so maybe some people found it boring and Araki is looking to actively change it by giving more automatic stands and actual tax to the user rather than just being an obstacle course that the main characters have to deal with. Anyway, the girl character does seem pretty fun. I find it interesting how at first they just seemed like a regular child, wanting something no matter what, but then they just decided to lock in. And for those who are watching this 10 years into the future, that means get serious. It was a complete tonal shift, which was quite fun to read. And it was wild seeing a child having these crazy deductive skills, like being able to figure out that our main characters were stained users just because of inconsistencies in the tape. Also another thing, but I loved some of the panels that had to do with this character. A lot of the poses used were really cool. I like this one a lot, and it reminds me of Gap as he used a similar framing for the pose in the chapter 105 cover of Jujoli. The main parts being the left arm being 
in a similar placement and both characters looking slightly down. Of course, this panel right here is amazing as well. I mean, it's in the thumbnail. For a lack of a better word, the aura from this girl is insane, which is a crazy thing to think about. Her words here were menacing as well, talking about how people will die no matter what with no exceptions. Like what? You were begging for a toy like 10 pages ago and now you're talking about death? There has to be something up with this child. Like, we can't go to the rock human route immediately. We already suspected like three other characters to have that, but I really want to know what type of life this child has lived in order to have this kind of mentality. A major section of this chapter and arguably the most plot heavy scene was when our gang found the woman from the land registry in the hospital and her dad was close by. Something I found interesting is that the reason why they even see this event to begin with is because Jodio mistook ICU for MRI as they were looking for an MRI scanner to find where the bag's grooves is located inside Usagi. Later on, we find out that it's just the lava rock bringing them towards the conversation. So we already knew that fate decided for our Jojo Lands gang to be here since the start of the scene. Regarding the scene itself, we find out that the dad is a congressman, specifically Congressman White. His last name is White, and that's another reference to Breaking Bad. Man, Araki must have loved that show. Anyway, the scene itself is actually pretty sad, with the congressman crying about how he was targeted by Howler specifically, being the reason why they went after his daughter. And soon, we see the daughter in a state where she is nearly dead. It's really unfortunate to see random people being wrapped around the antics of our main characters, as we find out the Lava Rock planned this so that they could sign a document that seizes the land for the congressman. Once again, it's really interesting to see so many people against Howler. I think every bad guy and even some random people that we have seen so far in the Jojo Lands share the opinion that Howler is evil and that they're hiding something. I don't think we've seen any members of Howler either yet. Araki is doing a really good job at hyping up these evil people. If everyone is out here saying that Howler is evil, I'm really scared to see who is controlling Howler or even some of the other executive members of the Howler company. And it's honestly fitting considering this is probably the final part of Jojo. Araki is really ending this with a bang. This chapter is honestly one of the best ones we've seen out of Jojo Lands. It really feels like the whole story that we're getting is coming together, with Howler, our main characters, and even some third parties added to the mix. I feel like Howler isn't gonna be some one-off thing, but will end up being an important foe for the most of the series. And speaking of important foes, Here's something important to understand about our main character himself, Jodio. I think this video goes really in depth on a certain theory I have regarding Jodio.